All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am absolutely delighted to welcome Crystal Washington, who is in lovely Houston, Texas. How are you doing, Crystal? I'm wonderful, John. How are you? I'm great. And this is very exciting because uh, apart from Sales Pop, as you know, Pipeliner CRM, we're a sales technology and Crystal is a is a technology futurist, especially sales and marketing, and telling us how technology is going to impact our future and how we should be using it. So I'm very excited to hear what Crystal has to say. She travels all over the world, advising and speaking on uh, technology in business, and uh, so I'm delighted to welcome you, Crystal. So as we go into 2019, what are some of the big technology changes or impacts or, or new uses of technology that we are going to experience in, in sales? I mean, I think one of the biggest things is obviously the integration of AI more mm -hmm. into our everyday lives. Yeah. And it's been creeping in there. I mean, we're aware of it, but when we start looking at even for people that have Gmail, how you start seeing it auto-completing your thoughts now, and people are like, ah, oh, what is this? <laughs> you know? um, so seeing that and using the smart speakers and starting to see organizations integrate that into even your hotel rooms now, Marriott and Hilton. So, you know, we're, we're seeing this pervasiveness. I mean, there's a technology, I think it's called Crystal Nose, where it kind of helps you, it guides you on how you should respond to emails to different individuals because it's scanning all past emails. And so it might tell you, add some smiley faces. This person likes it lighter. This is too wordy for this person. So it's both exciting and a little spooky, if, if, if I were to be honest, you know, but that stuff is out there. There's even tech out there that'll uh, basically dig up information on someone before you're meeting with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I've seen some of that. And it's interesting, you know, we do a we have a release of our mobile um, CRM app coming out um, next week and we have AI built into that now. And we really see, and I totally agree, and we really see AI as a great way of helping helping salespeople, but not what some people have tried to portray it as, is like, you know, AI is going to take over and you don't even need a salesperson anymore. The AI is going to sell for you. But that's, but that's not the reality with any technology really, is it? No, I don't believe so at all because sales is about relationships. Mm -hmm. And no matter what, these machines can't build relationships. Now, they can fool you for a while. I have a friend who's another technology speaker. I didn't even realize I was communicating with an AI assistant. I thought this was a real assistant. It was so polite, too. Mm -hmm. So I'm having conversations, setting up meetings and stuff with, with what amounts to, you know, AI. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, it's one thing to be able to set appointments. It's another thing to be able to build a genuine human connection. Mm -hmm. But this technology does enable us to do things that we didn't have access to before. Can I give you a quick example? Yeah, John? please do. Okay, so I had a meeting today with some top decision makers for an organization that I'm doing business with. And we had some issues with connecting yesterday. People's calendars were off. And so today I used DoorDash. Now, I'm in Houston, Texas. Everyone else is in an office in Chicago, Illinois. I scheduled a delivery of assorted coffees and things mm -hmm. that arrived five minutes before the meeting to their meeting room. Right. Those little, t and they weren't expecting that. Yeah. So yeah. they were just like, as soon as we pick up the phone, wow, I can't believe you did this. And so I think that technology, even these simple apps, allow us to almost be omnipresent. Almost. Yeah. But I like what you just said there because it, because a lot more business is being conducted remotely, right? And that's a challenge for for some people, especially people who maybe are old school and we're used to being a lot more kind of visiting people a lot more and now they're doing a lot more remote but what you just outlined there was remote does not have to mean disconnected right and no. you can you can still make that connection as you did with your coffee so I guess mine should be arriving any moment should it should I have <laughs> <laughs> but um so um so talk to me a little bit about that because that that's where I see a big change is is people learning how to interact and how to sell and develop relationships when you are never going to actually sit across a table or rarely going to sit across a table from someone? Well, I think that what's happening is all this technology, if we're really smart, we can use it to become superhumans. The key part of that is human. Right. So we're still retaining our humanity. So I'll give you another example. So I was keynoting for a very large convention in the building industry. Mm -hmm. And I knew that one of the women in my audience was a director of marketing for this, this large firm in the building industry. 
I put out a Google alert on her name. Nothing, you know, mm -hmm. fancy, but just a Google alert on her name. I just wanted to see what was going on with her because I knew that her company hired sales training speakers and, right. and I also do sales training. Mm -hmm. And so I put out this Google alert. Maybe about three weeks later, I get this alert that says that links to an article. She's basically won what amounts to like the Tony for marketing in their industry. Right. And so I immediately shoot her an email because I want to be quick. Mm -hmm. And I say, oh, my gosh, congratulations. I'm so happy that you won with a link to the article. Mm -hmm. Do you know that she responded back? She said, I won. Oh, wow. That's excellent. I'm the person who notified her. You can't put a price on mm -hmm. that. Except I did because she hired me for sales. <laughs> I love that. That's a phenomenal story. And I think uh, that that really reinforces because sometimes, you know, you can say that to people. You can say, oh, you should have alert. You should be tracking. You should be doing all this. And people go, yeah, yeah, it sounds great. and never do it. But you have what a fantastic uh, example of it, of it working here. I wanted to come back to something you mentioned earlier, because I read this a while ago about. Uh, some companies struggling with the with the notion of of using bots or you said there was an AI assistant you were talking to about whether you should actually let the other person know that it is actually a bot they're dealing with. It may be a very efficient one and you may be fine with that. But what, what's your what's your thoughts around that? Do as as consumers, are we are we going to be put off if we suddenly realize that we were dealing with a machine all the time or if the machine was effective, do we really care? I mean, what's your thoughts around that? I think that's probably going to depend on your market, to be mm -hmm. frank. So as you're forming the question, I was thinking to myself, I don't know if there's a one size fits all answer, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, for me, if you're looking at maybe higher dollar clients that just need to get stuff done and it's something very quick and swift, right. it doesn't matter. As mm -hmm. long as it gets done, it's great. But I think when you get into having those issues, it's like anyone that's with us right now, right? We've all had issues with our cable companies. Sure. There is nothing worse than waiting for the right like cue with the voice and which button to push. Mm -hmm. You want to choke somebody, right? So it really depends on where we're implementing those bots mm -hmm. and if it's slowing down the process or making it more efficient for the customers. Because a lot of, uh, a lot of companies are implementing technology that makes them more efficient internally right. but it actually makes the process longer for customers mm -hmm. and that's not good customer service no and, and it's not because then you start to get the impression that the uh, that the company is actually trying to hide from you because it keeps sending you down all these through a maze and down all these rat holes and you don't know where you are and then you have that great example as we all know where you've you've given your account number 52 times and you finally get through to the right person they say can i have your account number please and you're like Really, you you, you want to <laughs> you want to choke people. But another little tip, um, you can actually find there's quite a few different apps that are out there that are personal assistant apps where I just hire people for like five bucks via these apps to call into these numbers, and they just finally conference me in when they have a real human. Uh -huh. So if you know it's going to be two hours, because sometimes it gets ridiculous, mm -hmm. I go on about my work, have the assistant call them, wait in line, <laughs> you know, and then they conference me in. So if you can do something more efficient with that time and something that's revenue producing, go ahead and put someone else, whether it's a bot or another human, yeah. on that process. Yeah. So um, so you've written a lot. I mean, you wrote a book about social media and you obviously talk a lot about social media. And obviously social media is a, a very hot topic right now. We're not going to go into we're not going to get into that particularly. But um, social media in the context of sales, because there was a big push around it, oh, you know, over the last 10 or so years, you know, social selling, everybody. Do you think that people have reached a point where they really know how to use it properly? And how do you see it it uh, evolving in terms of a, of a business tool as opposed to uh, whatever else it is? I think a very, very small select percentage of salespeople effectively use social media. And yes, I've written a book on social media. I've written one that was another one that was a little bit more broader on technology. But what we're missing is, is that sometimes we focus so much on the numbers in terms of how many people I'm connecting with, rather than what you can do with this social media. I'll give you another example. Um, I was trying to win a piece of business. I Googled the person that was kind of the decision maker. I found out he had a Pinterest account, which is rare, because if you just mm -hmm. heard what I said, sure. I said he, he yeah. has a Pinterest yeah. account. <laughs> and it was all dedicated to his favorite football team. Oh, okay. And so what did I do? I ordered a mug that was with the football team, customized, put his name on it and sent it to him. And he was blown away. Mm -hmm. And so this is what 
social selling should be. It's mm -hmm. not about pushing or anything. The amount of insights you can get on people, the way that you can touch them in a different way. HR managers right now can't even get through to millennials that millennial talent because they don't want to have phone conversations. So if you're trying to get them on the phone, you're shooting that email, they already know they're qualified for the mm -hmm. ones that are in that pool, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you stand out as a recruiter from all the other people contacting them? Mention that you see that they're passionate about a certain project. You, this lines up with this company that I think you'd be a good fit for because this is their pet charity as well. So you, mm -hmm. you're not only are you skilled, but your values are aligned. Now you're showing them that you've paid attention to them and you set yourself apart from everyone else. Yeah, no, I, 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 I agree. I think that's a and that's a bit of a challenge now because we are dealing with uh, us old fogies now. We are dealing with a, a generation who who use technology differently. And as you say, you know, they like to be reached differently. And that, that was a fascinating story on Pinterest because personally, I've never understood Pinterest. Uh, I, always, I call it digital quilting, but that's... Uh, <laughs> But I, I'm telling you, what's interesting about your story, though, is the fact that um, you found out something that probably nobody else selling to that person came across and leveraged it in such a positive way. And I think you're correct. I think that it's about intelligently using the information and not just going nuts, spray and pray, right? Right. And, and if you notice, every example that I'm giving you is basically me showing how I've used the technology to connect with someone mm -hmm. on a human level. Right. Now, could I have connected with eight other people in that amount of time in a very quick fashion? Yes, but would have had the same impact? No. And so when you're looking at social selling, it shouldn't be a numbers game. This isn't mm -hmm. like prospecting on the phone or just calling right. random people. This is your opportunity to make an impact and an impression so that now you're building a real relationship. So, uh, so beyond AI and, and social media, what other uh, technology impacts do you see coming, coming upon us in the next year or so? Well, I, I have an entire keynote on how we're becoming cyborgs. Wow. Excellent. <laughs> that, that's, in I'm, that. I'm very interested. You're the first person who's told me I'm becoming a cyborg. So that's excellent. Go, go for yes. it. <laughs> so by definition, we are becoming the cyborgs of 1980s movies. Mm -hmm. If you look at, um, and the reason why is because we're mating with our devices. Mm -hmm. And when I say mating, I, I don't mean that way. Sure. I mean the second definition, which means being fitted with. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know too many people. I'm trying to see here. Here we go. I don't know too many people who don't sleep with at least one device, mm -hmm. if not multiple devices, right? Yeah, yeah. We have them at our fingertips. There have been all types of studies from numerous organizations. Class Free Labs is just one showing how our memories have been impacted because we're offshooting information to these phones. So now everyone has an external brain and an internal brain. We're mm -hmm. using two different ways to process information. And if you want to get through to people, you have to figure out how to talk to their internal and external brain. Right. So the way people learn is different. The way we communicate is different. We don't ever disconnect anymore. So by definition, we're cyborgs. Yeah, that's so that that is so fascinating. And it's funny for it's funny for, you know, people like myself who who came from pre-internet through internet through into devices because I was trying the other day and I, I don't know where I was going somewhere. And, uh, you know, driving along with the with Google Maps telling me where to go. And I was trying to remember, I was saying, how did I get places like I'm going somewhere quite complicated right now? How would I have gotten here, you know, 30, 40 years ago? I, I, I can't remember. I mean, did I how did I did I study a map? Or I literally I can't remember. But you're it's funny what you say about that, because now you have this automatic thing in the morning where instead of slapping your alarm clock, like in the good old days, you just reach across and grab that phone and you immediately look at the phone. It's almost the first thing you see every morning, right? Well, for most people, the phone is the first thing they interact with. Over 75% mm -hmm. of people interact with their phones first. What does that mean? That means the average human being greets their phone before their mate. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So again, we're attached in a new way. But when you talk about your GPS, I'll give you another crazy example. Um, I took a vacation to Maui in December. Okay, right. so I'm in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. By myself, they have this app where it's called, like, I think Road to Hannah or something like that. So for six hours, as I'm driving along, it automatically gives prompts. It'll literally say, see that cave over there? Pull over to your left. Go wow. in there. 
there's bats. And if you keep going inside, pull over to the left, there's a great ice cream stand. It was literally like that. I felt like I had made a friend. It was like I had a friend in the car with me for six hours when I was by myself directing me. No Wi-Fi in this location mm-hmm. because it's so remote. But that's where technology is. And, and 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 what I like about that is if you think about that in a sales context, how you could leverage that, because, I mean, think of it, if you were going to to meet a client for the first time, you could you, and even if it wasn't your town, right, you could say, hey, I, I believe there's this fantastic ice cream stand down here. Do you know it? Right. You immediately have something to connect on and maybe a good place to meet or whatever. But it, again, it's it's providing you with opportunities to to humanly connect. Right. I agree. And then on top of that, when you talk about other technologies, I feel that salespeople are not fully leveraging. And this isn't this isn't working for all salespeople. Mm-hmm. So you have to figure out if it works sure. for you. But I still think augmented via- reality and virtual reality. Um, I have an Oculus. I, I can't get to it easily, <laughs> easily right now. I have an Oculus Rift. So that's a huge thing. Mm-hmm. And you're just like going into other worlds. I can walk around real estate in Manhattan and Los Angeles, I'm literally going through homes for sale. Uh, And so you're seeing in real estate for the higher dollar, higher net worth individuals, when you have people buying across really continent, Mm -hmm. how you can utilize this tool. Now, augmented reality, you know, you're not immersed in another world. It's an overlay. Sure. And so thinking about when you have, um, I feel like we're not fully taking advantage of the space that we have. And so instead of just having simple banners or something on the bus or whatever, imagine if you had some type of AR app where you put it over and it's giving you more immersive information, like what they're doing right now in museums or in national Mm -hmm. parks, so that you can have even more informed clients. If they're sitting in the bank anyways, waiting to see you as a rep, why not give them access to get more information? It could be a video that pops up that's playing for them. They're sitting there anywhere bored. Mm-hmm. You utilize that time. Yeah, and I think the other thing is that we're we're getting so overloaded with information from all sides that I think anything that you can do to simplify or to get the relevant information to someone quickly is you're going to stand out with that, aren't you? I agree. And the thing is, it's not about looking techie. Mm-hmm. I actually think the best technology is almost hidden. Right. Right. So it's not about this is our new app. It has these features. Don't go there. Mm -hmm. Literally point your phone here. Let us help you better understand your different product. Let's go through and take a test to figure out which items best suit you. Again, they're sitting there waiting. Mm -hmm. So not highlighting the technology, highlighting the benefit to our potential customers and prospects. Yeah. And, you know, I came across an interesting one recently because um, we were switching one of our cars. And the interesting thing is how how quickly these things change. Right. So we were talking about GPS earlier. So in in the last number of years, you wouldn't buy a car without navigation built in. Most people wouldn't. Right. Adds about adds about three thousand dollars to the price of your car. Now, with Apple CarPlay. If if the vehicle is Apple CarPlay, you don't have to pay that extra three grand to have the navigation in. You have your Google Maps, which is actually better anyway because it's Agreed. it's all up in real time. So again, it's I think you have to look at how do you uh, to your point, how do you make it easier for the customer, and how do you introduce things that instead of saying now I've got to learn this new navigation system and it never gets updated, I can just use the one on my phone and my car actually accommodates that. I agree. I mean, again, it's about making it easy. And I think even for ourselves, sometimes we feel pressure. Mm -hmm. Anyone who's listening to our conversation right now that's joining us has probably said at some point, it's too much. I have to keep up with all of it. It's not about keeping up with all of it. It's about figuring out the technology that makes you more efficient, effective, and connected Mm -hmm. and throwing away the rest. There's some things like I I still have a landline Mm -hmm. and that's where I communicate with most of my customers. And I still have a I think it's called a RJ Jack headset for that All right, because yeah. the quality of sound is superior mm-hmm. to what I can get on a cell phone. And my clients deserve, in my opinion, mm-hmm. the best sound. And so that's older technology. This technology has been around since the 80s. So it's not always about a- adapting because something's new. It's only adapting to something that either makes you better or provides better service. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a that's a wonderful example. And and I used a, in a book I wrote many years ago, I used the example of, you know, David and Goliath, right? Mm-hmm. The the true story of David and Goliath or the uh, the full story is that 
the the king wanted to give David the latest, greatest armor to use before he went out to the giant. And it was so overwhelming and heavy that David said, no, nah, this isn't going to work for me. I'll, I'll be happy with my slingshot, right? If he'd have lumbered out in the thing, he'd have probably been stomped underfoot immediately. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, but the point is, yeah, to your point, though, it's not about the new technology. It's about what works. And sometimes it's not the new technology that works. Sometimes the old technology works better. It, it's what benefits your customer. I think it's about not getting trapped in the sexy, you yeah. know, because there's all this technology that comes out. And people are like, woo, it's new. And, and there's no real benefit to it. I mean, yeah. honestly, sometimes, now I'm not saying that's true of all the technology, sure. but there are some very popular, I'm not, I'm not going to hate on anything in particular <laughs> right now, but there's some very popular technology that people are just flocking to get. And I'm like, this is inferior. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. it, it, and when you ask people, what's the benefit over what you had before? Mm -hmm. People, blink, blink. Well, it's whatever the brand is. Well, it's everyone has it. Yeah, no, I, I've had that. Uh, I have that kind of with my phone right now. Is that I don't want to upgrade because I don't like the way the new one works. Right, I like the way the old one works, and uh, but I think that's I think that's a that's a great point because we do suffer shiny new toy syndrome. It's like ooh, ooh, ooh look, 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 and and we don't sort of look at uh, again as what you were saying, what really works well. Um, Okay, so we're bumping up against the end of our time. Um, do you have anything else you want to share? Any other things you see in the future? Uh, the other thing that I want to share for anyone listening, especially for anyone that might be managing teams, is that as you start to look at this new technology, because it's going to roll out faster and faster, make sure that you're not only ad adapting to new technology that serves your clients, but make sure that whatever it is you're selecting fits the culture of your company and your employees. Because sometimes we bring in things that they really don't stand a chance in H-E double hockey stick based <laughs> on who we have on staff. And that's OK. And so we have to think about what we can integrate with what we already have in terms of our resources, including human capital. And so for me, that's the biggest thing. Yeah. And that's another great point to end on there. Yeah. It's make sure that the technology fits your culture and vice versa. So, Crystal, before we go, uh, uh, just like you to tell people a little bit more about yourself, how they can learn more about you. Sure. My name is Crystal Washington, as you know, and my website is crystalwashington.com, C-R-Y-S-T-A-L. And um, I'm a professional speaker. I'm a technology strategist and certified futurist, which is kind of weird um, for most people. I don't know. I don't predict the future. That just means <laughs> I study it. Um, and I just travel all over the world talking to organizations that want to leverage technology for profits and productivity. And so if anyone's interested in learning more or contacting me, if they go to crystalwashington.com, they'll find a link for my email the links to all the social media, they can find me everywhere there. <laughs> Excellent. Now, the only thing I didn't get to, uh, as I was reading earlier, is uh, we never got to talking about alligators in the Amazon, but we'll save that one for another. <laughs> we'll save that one for next time. <laughs> uh, assuming I'm here and one doesn't kill me. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. All right. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine Pipeline is here. I am Crystal Washington. Thank you very much. It's been a great interview. See you all again soon. Thank you.